In this Inkscape lesson, we're going to learn how to trace an image using the pin tool and make our line art look nicer by using width variations and tapered ends. To get started, we need to import the image that we want to trace, which we can do by going to File, Import. The image we'll use in this video is this fox image here. I provided a link to this image in the description below in case you would like to use it to follow along. OK, so to import the image, we can just double click it, then click OK here. Let's pan over here some, which we can do by pressing down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse. Let's move the image over here so that the page doesn't get in the way. And before we start tracing, let's go down here to the status bar and change the opacity of the image to about 50%. This will make it so the lines we draw will be easier to see. All right now, let's switch to the pen tool here. Let's start by tracing the fox's right ear. First, let's zoom in on the ear sum by putting our cursor near it, then pressing down the control key and scrolling up the mouse wheel. Let's start here at the bottom of the ear. We're not going to do an exact tracing in this video, because that will take forever, and because we're later going to give our line art a nice artistic look with varied widths and tapered ends. Alright, so without further ado, let's click about right here to create the first point. Next, we want to create a curved line at this part of the ear. To do this, we can click and hold down the mouse button here, and now as we move the mouse, it gives us these handles that allow us to adjust the curvature of the line we're creating. When we release the mouse, it creates the curved line. Now we can click and drag at the top point of the ear, release, then do the same here, then down here. And to finish this ear path, we can either press the enter key or right click. Let's also create a line here where the ear kind of meets the head. I'll click here, then click and drag here, and right click. I'll do the same for the top part of the head by clicking here, click dragging here, and right clicking. Now let's create a path for the left ear. Let's also create one for the top part of the head here. Next, let's draw the face. For this furry part right here, we can just simply give the path a jagged look by clicking different points. Now I'll right click here. Let's do the same for this side. Now let's create a curved path for this snout. For the mouth, we can click here, then click drag here, but we actually want to create a sharp point here to give the path a wavy shape. To do this, before releasing the mouse, we can hold Shift, which allows us to move the handle under the cursor. Now we can put the handle over here, then release the mouse, creating a sharp point. Then we can click drag over here, and right click to finish the path. Now if we didn't quite get the curvature of a segment the way we want it, we can go to the Node tool here, and click and drag the segment to change its curvature. We can also move around the nodes and curvature handles with this tool. Ok, let's go back to the pen tool. For the nose, I'll click right here, and drag down here, then over here, then up here, then click drag the first point. This gives us a closed path. We want to fix this up a bit though, so let's go to the node tool. First, this node here is a cusp node at the moment. Cusp nodes allow us to create sharp corners. We actually want to smoothen this out. To do this, we can turn the node into a smooth node by clicking this button up here. With smooth nodes, we have two handles that rotate together. Something else we can do with the node tool is double click a segment to add a new node. Let's do this here. Now we can bring this up to make the path match the fox's nose a bit better. Let's do the same over here. We 
Okay, let's go back to the pen tool, which we can do by pressing the B key. Let's create a curved path here attaching the nose to the mouth. Next for the eye, I'll create a curved path up here. Then one here. And I'll create a round closed path for the eye. And like with the nose, I'll go to the node tool, which we can do by pressing the N key. Select the first node and turn it into a smooth node, which we can do easily by pressing down the control key and clicking the node. Then adjust everything a bit. Let's create similar paths for the other eye. Actually, the two eyes look pretty similar in the image, so we can just use duplicates of these paths. To do this, we can go to the select tool, select one of the paths, hold shift and click the other two to add them to the selection, press ctrl D to duplicate them, then press the H key to flip them horizontally and move them over here. I'll adjust these just a bit. Let's also go ahead and create some closed paths up here for the inner parts of the ears. Okay, let's next work on this furry part on the front of the body. For this, we can start up here and just create a jagged path like we did for the furry part of the face. Now I'll right click here to finish the path. Okay, let's work on the rest of the body and the legs. First I'll click here where the back meets the head, then click and drag here, then here. Let's do the back right leg as well. Then right click here. Now let's create a path starting here and going all the way down around the front right leg. We can't actually see the front foot here, but we can kind of guess how it looks by seeing the back foot. I'll finish the path here. Now let's work on the front left leg. Because it's being overlapped by the right leg here, let's right click to finish this path then create another path starting over here. Now let's create a path for the back left leg. And again, because it's being overlapped by the other leg, we can just finish the path here. Finally, we have the tail. I'll start up here. I'm just going to make the top part of the tail smooth. Then when I get here, I'll start making it jagged. I'll right click here to finish it. Okay, we're finished tracing the image now. So we can switch to the select tool and move the image out of the way. We can also put its opacity back on 100%. Next we want to increase the width of all of these paths. To do this we can select them all, then right click this value in the status bar next to the opacity and choose something else. Two should be good. And actually let's select all of the closed paths, including the inner ear parts, the eyes, and the nose. Let's turn off the stroke by opening the fill and stroke dialog with this button up here. Then going to the stroke paint tab and clicking the X here. Now let's go to the fill tab and click this button to give it a flat fill color. Let's make sure it's set to black. 
All right, next we're going to work on varying the widths of these paths, as well as tapering the ends of them. For this, we'll use the power stroke path effect. Let's begin with the first path we created here for the right ear. Let's go ahead and select it, then open the path effects dialog by going to the path menu and choosing path effects near the bottom. Now let's click the plus button at the bottom of the path effects dialog. And in here, let's click on the icon for power stroke. All right, now if we switch to the node tool with the N key, we see these purple diamond handles at the ends and near the center of the path. These are called control points. If we grab one of the control points at the ends, we can drag it up and down to adjust the tapering at that end. And we can drag it in and out to adjust the width there. And we can use the inner control point to adjust the width of the part of the path near that point. We can actually create more control points by pressing down the control key and clicking one. To delete a control point, we can press down Ctrl and Alt and click it. We can also still adjust the nodes and curves of the path. Let's now select this path and add power stroke to it. Let's go ahead and adjust it a bit. Let's do the same for this path over here. We can probably delete this center control point. Also, if we want to easily adjust the width of the entire path, we can do so with the width parameter in the path effects dialog. I'm now going to follow the same steps for the other ear and the rest of the face. When we get to one of these jagged paths, after we add power stroke to it, the corners become rounded. To fix this, we can go to the path effects dialog and change the join parameter to miter. If some of your corners are still rounded, increasing the miter limit here should fix it. With larger paths like this, you might get this effect where it tries to fill in the inner area. It usually just takes a little bit of adjusting to get it working correctly.
Alright, I think our line art is looking pretty good now, so let's finish up by adding some color. But first, we want to finalize the power stroke path effect of these paths. The reason for this is that, if we decide to move the paths around later, I find that this can often interfere with the path effect settings. So to prevent this from happening, we can select all of the paths, and go to Path, Object to Path. Now if we select one of the paths, we can see in the path effects dialog that it no longer has power stroke attached to it. And if we go to the node tool, we can see that we don't have the control points anymore. Okay, and to make our lives easier when we add color, we can put the line art and the colors on two separate layers. This will allow us to keep the line art always on top of the colors, and it will also allow us to easily lock the line art paths so that we don't accidentally move them around. So first, let's open the Layers and Objects dialog by going to Layer, Layers and Objects. Let's hover over this first button at the top to show the layers, then let's rename Layer 1 by double-clicking its name in the list here, and I'll call it Line Art. Let's also lock the layer by clicking this lock icon on the right. Now we can't select anything in this layer. Okay, now let's add a new layer by clicking this button at the top of the dialog. Let's name it Colors. And we want to make sure position here is set to below current, so that all of the colors will stay below the line art on the canvas. Now let's click the add button. And now with the colors layer active in the list, we can start adding some colors. First we want to fill in the whole area within the line art with a solid color. To do this we can switch to the pen tool, and create a path following along the outer parts of the line art. As long as we keep the segments of this path within the line art paths, we don't have to worry about following it perfectly. Okay, after we close off the path, we can turn off the stroke by switching to the Stroke Paint tab with the Fill and Stroke dialog and clicking the X. Now let's go to the Fill tab, give it a flat fill with this button, and let's click this eyedropper icon at the bottom. With this, we can choose a color from the image to set the selected path's fill color. That should work. Next, we want to cut out this part of the path between the front legs. To do this, we can first use the Pen tool to create a closed path around this area. Now we can switch to the Select tool, hold Shift and select the color path, and go to Path, Difference. Alright, next we can add in some of the darker orange parts and the white parts. I'll start with the white on the face and front of the body by first switching to the Pen tool and creating a path here. I'll turn off the stroke, give it a flat fill, and use the color picker to choose the color from the image. I'll add some more of this color on the back legs. Let's also add these dark parts to the bottoms of the legs and the tail. Now instead of trying to follow along this jagged part of the tail, we can just bring it down here, then over here, follow along this part, and close it off. Now we can turn off the stroke and set the fill color. 
Then switch to the Select tool, select the big color path, and duplicate it with Ctrl D. Hold Shift and select the path we just created, and go to Path, Intersection. There we go. Now let's finish up by adding some of these darker orange paths. I just noticed that I forgot to add some darker parts to the bottoms of the back legs, so I'll do that now. Okay, I think that should be good enough. Now we don't need the image anymore, so we can switch to the Layers and Objects dialog, unlock the Line Art layer, then delete the image. And that should do it for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.